Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very very exponential equation. We have z to the power z equals e to the power negative pi plus 2i ln 2. And I'll be presenting two methods but we're gonna go back and forth because I need to show you something but before I do that I don't want to spoil the surprise. Anyways, let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to start with z to the z, and that should remind you something special, right? We'll get to it. So first of all, how do you write z to the z? Anytime you have something like z to the w, it can be written as e to the power w ln z. That's the, basically the complex exponentiation. So a complex number to another complex number, and they could be the same, obviously, but in general, this just means that it's an exponential. And we can kind of explain. And what is the ln of a complex number? We'll talk about that too. But let's go ahead and work this out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and replace z to the z with e to the power z ln z. That's going to be very helpful. That form, make sure you remember that, okay? Now, let's go ahead and replace z to the z with that. And we're going to have e's on both sides, which is nice because we can natural log both sides and get rid of the bases and proceed with the exponents. Make sense? Okay, great. Now we get z ln z equals negative pi plus 2i ln 2. You could also write i times 2 ln 2, but I like to write it this way. Now what can I do with this? Well, can we use Lambert's w function? Let's take a look. We can go ahead and replace z with e to the power ln z, and now we're going to get something like this. ln z times e to the power ln z equals negative pi plus 2i ln 2. And then by replacing ln z with t, we get t e to the t, which should remind you Lambert's w function. Can we use it? Maybe, probably, but we'll look at this later because I, I got something else for you. I mean for you. Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and proceed with the second method and we'll get back to this later. So, for my second method, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I need to do something different, right? So, this is kind of like the reverse engineering the problem, but guess what? If you know where the problem comes from, if, if you came up with the problem, I guess we could call this a homemade problem in that sense, it's easier, obviously, right? If you write, if you write the code, you can reverse engineer it, can't you? obviously. So, now, you got to remember the ln of a complex number at this point, right? What is ln w? Now, ln w, w is a complex number that can be written in polar form or standard form, doesn't matter, but it is equivalent to ln of the absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. And of course, argument of w is not a single value, it's multi-valued because you can add multiples of 2 pi to it, so on and so forth. Well, this doesn't fit our pattern because notice that i here is not multiplied by the argument. The argument is more like here. But don't worry, because we're going to make it work with a little math magic, okay? All right, let's see how that goes. I'm gonna take this exponent, negative pi, plus 2i ln 2, and this is how the math magic works. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this by negative i, and then multiply by i. Now, why am I doing it? You'll see in a little bit the motivation, but essentially, multiplying by negative i times i is multiplying by negative i squared, which is positive 1. So, we're not really changing the value, right? So, that's the cool thing about it. But the coolest thing about it is when we multiply, something mathematical happens. We'll see. Now, when you distribute the negative i, this is going to be i pi plus 2 ln 2, and all of that is going to be multiplied by i. But do not distribute the i because that'll put you back to square 1. You don't want to do that. Now, we're almost there. Just one more thing, okay? And that is going to be to take out a 2. You know why? Because I want the ln of something to be alone. I don't want any number in front of it. And the main motivation behind that is the actually buried with the log of a complex number. So it's right here. If you take a look at this carefully, ln of something is not multiplied by something else. I mean, if it's multiplied by something else, by the way, you could still take care of it because you could kind of move that over here as an exponent 
and maybe that'll be like something to the power of something else, right? But in this case, I'm not going to do it because that's how it works. That's how the cookie crumbles, as they say it. So now, I'm going to go ahead and take out an additional or another factor, which is 2 in this case. And 2 is very critical. Again, speaking of reverse engineering, it's easier, much easier if you know the code, right? Okay. So now, if you take out a 2i instead of an i, you're going to get something like this. 2i will be in the front. Let's just switch it. And then i pi over 2 will be multiplied by 1 half. And this is just going to be ln2. But I want to write it like this. It's better that way because, look, now it actually fits the pattern perfectly, right? ln of the absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. So the million dollar question is, if this is the modulus or the absolute value, could this be the argument? That is the most critical part, because if that doesn't work, everything collapses like crazy, okay? So here's the thing. If you think about this and if you look at it very carefully, you're going to realize that this is actually the ln of 2i. Again, speaking of reverse engineering, this is easy to know, right, if you know it. Because the argument for 2i or any positive multiple of i is pi over 2, obviously, right? Think about it. It's right here. I mean... We don't need a circle. Anyways, what am I talking about? Like, i is going to be on the imaginary. So, of course, that's going to be pi over 2. Just a principal branch. Come on. Work with me on that. So, this is ln 2i. Great. 2i is being multiplied by ln 2i. That's perfect. So, let's go ahead and do that. 2i ln 2i. And what is that equal to? That is equal to the exponent. i pi plus 2 ln 2. Where does that come from? From here. So, we have to put z to the z equals e to the this. Make sense? 2i ln 2i. But the, the rest is fun. It's just fun, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look. And we're going to look at the results from Wolfram Alpha 2. So stay, stick around, okay? Now, how do we handle this? Easy. This is product of two exponents. So I can kind of write it as e to the power ln 2i. And that's just amazing, right? To the power 2i. But what is uh, e to the power ln something is something. So this equals 2i to the power 2i. And that's what I mean by mathemagic, right? Or hocus pocus, abracadabra. Okay, so from here, z equals 2i is a solution, right? Yay, we got one solution at least, right? Cool, cool. That's what I was looking for. Now, let's go back to the first method, and we're going to pick it up from here. So we got, so far, t e to the t, if you remember, we had z uh, ln z times e to the ln z, and I called it t, and this was equal to negative pi plus 2i ln 2. So, from here, if I lambert both sides, I'm going to get w here and w here, and this is going to give me t equals that, and then t is ln z, though, ln z is equal to w something, and then what am I going to get? Okay, fine, I'm going to write it. Uh, ln z is going to equal w of negative pi plus 2i ln 2. And from here, z is just going to be e to the power Lambert's w of negative pi plus 2i ln 2. The first value that we started with, that was the exponent, remember? So that's the z value. But wait a minute, what is that equal to? Let's go ahead and check it out, right? Ready? Ta-da. All right. Well, <laughs> that doesn't look very good, does it? Okay. If you consider pretty much all the values where n is an integer, you're going to get something super duper messy. But we can also get a clean result by changing the prompt a little bit. If this is your input, then wait a minute. Isn't this 2i? Yeah, pretty close. So we'll take it because there are infinitely many nines. And if you scroll down a little bit on um, Wolfram Alpha, it's not here, but you will see that it's actually 2i. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.